इस ब्लूमबर्ग यू टीवी This is Talk Back. I'm Hindols and Gupta. Delighted to welcome on the show historian Neil Ferguson. Neil Ferguson, thanks very much indeed. My pleasure. Let me then begin by asking you for someone who is historian and does not claim to be an economist, is not trapped as you keep saying in your own macroeconomic model. The big question from the eyes of history is even as one huge crisis comes to an end are we beginning to make the same mistakes again because some experts suggest that even as we speak asset bubbles are recreating themselves in many parts of the world is that a fear that you see well i think there is a real danger because if you think about it the crisis came about partly because of excessive leverage on bank balance sheets uh, and a high level of risk taking uh, by almost any measure uh, and in in a sense we've made matters worse because the guarantees the bailouts that that were used to avert a complete meltdown of the system have in, in in a sense increased the moral hazard the two big to fail institutions are now in a position to be even more leveraged if they want to be and to take even more risk uh, so the system is at a very critical point uh, and all over the world national governments are having second thoughts about creating two big to fail institutions most recently uh, in the united states where president obama has unveiled to the great amazement of wall street a much more radical plan uh for banking reform than anyone had expected. Now if anything's going to cause the next crisis, it's a sudden change of plan uh by the government and I'm I'm rather afraid that that's what we're seeing okay already. In terms of the new crises that might be emerging from a, from the greater crises that we have seen when we talk about asset price bubbles, uh many fingers point towards Asia, especially the East Asian economies. Are you sensing bubble creation in those economies? Well, my definition of a bubble is when an asset market uh, increases in value by a factor of between five and ten, uh, and, and that kind of a bubble, I don't think we're yet seeing. Uh, even in China, where credit growth got completely out of hand uh, in the last quarter, uh, there are reasons for the price of Asian assets to be rising. If growth is forecast to be in the in the region of seven to ten percent. uh for China and in the region of 5 to 8% for India over the next 5 years that's a reason for investors to be very attracted to these economies because remember growth in the west is going to be much lower than that uh Europe is looking at stagnation Japan is uh in 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 a in a state of complete collapse uh and even the United States will be doing well if it can achieve 2% growth uh, on average over the next 5 years so i think there are reasons why investors want to get uh into asian assets uh and in that sense i'm not completely convinced Uh, that this is bubble territory uh, the, the increase in asset prices isn't that huge relative to the prospects for growth what are the key fears then are the key fears in india at least we believe the key fear will be price of commodities especially in food it's a it's a crisis that we already seen yes. we've had a nasty drought the impacts could be far more graver than we yeah. earlier anticipated and clearly it's not a problem that's going to go away our biggest scientists suggest that in the next decade it's not going to be oil it's not going to be guns it's going to be green that will be the determining factor i think that's a good point i i wrote a piece some years ago saying that we should be more worried about peak wheat than about peak oil uh, because there has been a fundamental shift in agricultural production uh, ever since the collapse of the soviet union global grain output has actually declined uh, and also the shift in in asian tastes uh, towards meat means a fundamental uh, strain on the on the global agricultural system but what's really interesting about this is it's not so much that we get an upward trend in prices what we get is volatility we saw one of the most extraordinary price spikes in commodity history in 2008 It's the first time that there's been a coordinated increase in the price of nearly all commodities other than in time of world war. Now what worries me is it's the volatility that we're going to see rather than the upward trend in prices. That volatility makes it very hard for governments particularly in countries like India with very large poor populations to cope. If one minute rice is affordable and a week later it's suddenly out of sight, what do you do? Uh, and I think we're going to see all kinds of attempts by uh, developing country governments to contend with price volatility, the obvious way being stockpiling. Uh, and I think there's also a danger that the international system of free trade comes under 
strain. Uh, because if volatility reflects uh, the integration of global commodity markets, if that's one of the consequences of global integration, many governments will say, hmm, well, let's reduce the integration, let's make ourselves more self-sufficient, and let's, if necessary, ban the export of key grains like rice. We saw export bans in 2008. Uh, we could see them again if prices spike. And I think that's a reason to worry about globalization itself. What is the big lesson that we learned and indeed failed to learn from the economic crisis? Well, the economic crisis was caused by a multiplicity of factors. Uh, after all, uh, you could include mistakes of monetary policy as well yes. as uh, mismanagement of banks. You'd have to include errors uh, in the derivatives market, uh, not to mention the mortgage market. It's a That's complex right. crisis. Yes. Uh, and I think the danger is that we draw oversimplistic lessons from it. Uh, the most obvious simplistic lesson is to say this crisis was caused by deregulation, therefore let's have regulation. I think that argument is a very weak one because it's, it's easy to forget how badly the US economy performed in the 1970s when the regulations were in place. So we mustn't throw the baby out with the bathwater and say all the deregulation that happened since Ronald Reagan was bad. Most of the mistakes that caused this crisis happened in the relatively recent past. The Fed's big mistake was really to keep interest rates too low between 2002 and 2004. Now, that's not a very exciting conclusion, uh, and it's not as good as the headline like the death of capitalism or the end of the free market. But I think uh, the real headlines, the real lessons to be drawn from this crisis are quite technical. Monetary policy needs to pay attention to asset prices, number one. Bank balance sheets should not be leveraged 30 to one, number two. We need to revisit the Basel Accords on bank capital capital adequacy because Basel II has failed. Now, that's not very sexy stuff. That's Some right. of it's really nerdy and technical, yes. but those are the real lessons that we need to learn from the crisis. Not that capitalism is fatally flawed and should be scrapped. That's the wrong lesson. The right lesson is that regulatory frameworks are complex systems and they do need to be adjusted because financial systems change. There were no derivative markets 20 years ago worth right. talking about. Naturally, we have to come up with a new regulatory framework and that's the challenge we currently face. 20 years from now, the story is going to be very different. China will be slowing down, and I predict that the Indian tortoise will overtake the Chinese hare at some time in our lifetimes.